So in this video, I wanted to cover a few miscellaneous issues about memory systems, and most of these pertain to the topic of memory scheduling. So we, we previously talked about you know, how on the processor chip, when you have a miss in your last level cache, that request then shows up at the memory controller. Okay, And the memory controller has to handle both reads and writes. And there's usually a separate queue for reads and separate queue for writes. Okay, now you know these. This memory controller drives a single bus that is used for both read and write traffic. Okay, and ultimately, you know these things show up at DRAM chips. There are there are wires inside the DRAM chip as well that are commonly used for both reads and writes. Okay, so every time, uh, you know, let's say that you were doing a read, and so you know there was data being shipped in this direction over here. If you decide to switch to a write you have to let enough time elapse so that all the circuits and all the wire, all the signals and the wires can stabilize before you can send out your uh, next data that, that, that you want to send in this opposite direction. Okay, so between a read and a write and likewise between a write and a read you know, some time has to elapse. Okay, and so you know, these are basically timing constraints uh, that the memory controller is expected to honor while scheduling d different requests. Okay, what this ultimately boils down to is the fact that when you're issuing a read and then when you want to go from a read to a write, you have to let some idle time elapse during which the bus is going to be unutilized. Okay, so every switch from a read to a write and likewise a switch from a write to a read leads to bus underutilization. And this is something that you must try to avoid if you're trying to you know, improve performance and maximize uh, the bandwidth available to applications. Okay, so uh, the way this is usually handled is, you know, once you're doing reads, you do a whole bunch of reads. And then, you know, if it's time to do writes, then you turn the bus around, then you start issuing a bunch of writes, and then you switch back to doing reads. Okay, so you never do, you never do reads and writes in isolation, and you don't constantly go back and forth between reads and writes. What you end up doing is a burst of reads, then you switch the bus, then you do a burst of writes, then you switch the bus, then go back to doing a burst of reads, and so on. Okay, and this helps reduce the negative impact of the bus un underutilization in these intervals over here. Okay, so the way again this is handled is if I kind of blow up this figure of the write queue, since writes are not on the critical path, reads are always prioritized. So when a write shows up, all it does is it gets buffered in this write queue. Okay, and once the write queue gets you know close to being full, so this is called a high watermark. And once you reach that high watermark, you realize that you know, it's time to start draining the writes, otherwise your write queue will get full. So at that point, you turn the bus around and you start draining these writes. Okay, and finally, when the number of writes reaches what is called a low watermark, then you say that, you know, I'm, I now feel comfortable enough to switch back to doing reads again, because the reads have been waiting for a while now. And those are critical because you know your program is waiting for the results of those read, and so at that point you switch back to doing reads. Then again, when the write buffer reaches the high watermark, you switch back to doing reads, and so on. Okay, so this is how you know most memory controllers will handle reads and writes. The next thing worth uh, worth keeping in mind is you know what is called an address mapping policy. Okay, so if you look at your processor, usually you don't just have you know one memory controller and one memory channel. Usually there are multiple memory controllers and multiple different channels. Okay, and each channel is basic is going to control you know multiple DIMMs and, and ranks. Okay, so if you expect your application to have high locality, right? So if you touch cache line X and then you touch cache line X plus one, X plus two and so on, what you would like to do is enjoy the benefit of row buffer hits for these other accesses. So in that case, you know, if you have one given rank over here, in that case, you want to map your data such that consecutive cache lines gets, get placed in the same rank. Okay, so if X is sitting over here, you want X plus one to be sitting in that same row, X plus two to, to, to be sitting in that same row as well. So then you can enjoy row buffer hits for them. Okay, so this is called an address mapping policy where consecutive cache lines are placed in the same row and that allows you to have high row buffer um, hit rates for applications that have locality and that's something I'm showing over here okay so consecutive cache lines basically have different column bits and but the, but they share the same you know channel bank and rank bits all right the other option is to say that my application doesn't really have much locality 
And so in that case, what I really want to do is I want to spread my cache lines around as much as possible. Okay, or your application could have locality, but instead of enjoying row buffer hits, what you want to say is that if I scatter my requests across you know many different banks and ranks and channels, then I can bring all of these requests in together. Okay, so if I do touch X and then I do touch X plus one and X plus two and so on, if there are row buffer hits, I need an, need at least like a 20 nanosecond gap between the return of these pieces of data. But instead, what I can do is I can say that, well, X gets placed over here, so let me cancel these out. So X gets placed over here, X plus one gets placed here, X plus two gets placed here, and so on. So if I do that, then I don't have to wait for 20 nanoseconds between the return of these consecutive cache lines. I can issue a request for X at the same time, I can issue a request for X plus one and X plus two. So all of these data pieces come back together. Okay, they won't be row buffer hits. Okay, but you know, if there's enough locality, maybe they, they will be row buffer hits as well. All right, so you know, these are alternative uh, ways to place data in, in different parts of the memory system. In one case, you are prioritizing row buffer hits. In the other case, you are prioritizing uh, memory level parallelism while fetching these these blocks of data. Okay, and you know these also go hand in hand with you know open row, open and, and closed page policies. So if you do decide to place you know x here and x plus one here and x plus two here, you might want to go with an open page policy. Otherwise, you know you really are not exploiting uh, this locality and the low latency for a row buffer hit. Okay, whereas if you decide to spread consecutive cache lines around, then it seems like you know you're already giving up on locality, in which case you're better off going with a closed page policy.